Hi guys and welcome to another Fusion 360 tutorial and here we're going to be looking at applying a custom uh, material to a object so we'll go ahead and um, create an object on our origin plane here and uh, we've covered adding materials before, we'll just turn this into a component um, but this time we're going to customize it a little bit so if we go to appearance it'll open up our appearance dialog box here so you can see there are a bunch of um, already standard appearances that we can apply so let's say uh, some glossy paint for example we could drag that over there onto the surface um, or we could go with a red glossy paint um, there's also other options like we could go with um, glass so there's even colored glasses as well so we can drag different materials here onto the object and you'll see anything that we've used shows up up here now these are all editable so if we go over to the green one and we right click on it and we will duplicate this right click on the duplicate and go to edit now we can change its color uh, we can change its name we can change the roughness the reflectiveness of the surface so we could make this a slightly different shade of green hmm? and then you can input RGB values down here so if you wanted it to be an exact match to something from um, a Photoshop, or, or you can even get uh, Pantone colors, um, uh, Pantone colors here that you can use as well. Um, so we can edit the color, roughness, ref uh, reflectiveness. It's how shiny it is, and then over in here we can then do even more. Um, so translucency. This is basically how transparent it may be okay um, emissivity this is how much light it's going to emit so you can make it like a like a light bulb or an LED or something and you can have it emit a certain amount of light so the higher you make this number the more light it's emitting okay and you can also choose a, a filter color, whether it's white light or whether it is a, a green colored light. In this case, we want a green colored light, so we go to a green shade for our luminance. So if we have that and we go to apply and we now drag this onto our object, you won't see much of a difference here. But if we go over into our render view, that's where you'll begin to see the effect that this has. So this particular object right now is not very luminescent. It's not giving up a, a lot of light. But if we skip back to design and we open up our appearance box again, we go in and edit this. And we'll make the luminance brighter okay so now it's, maybe that's a bit too much now we render again you'll see we've got a lot more light coming off of that now if we had other objects near here that are reflective you'll start to see reflections as well so let's um, create another component we'll create another box here We'll move it a little closer, like so. Now, if we make this particular one into something reflective, maybe some glass, and now we go into our render view, you can see that we added a little bit of uh, transparency to this lower object. And we can see it through our glass, you start to see the color change and refractions as you would expect. So we can um, also add kind of 
textures to this, something that looks, um, let me see, I think it's under paint. We have powder coat. So if we go for a powder coat rough surface, so um, I cannot download any materials right now. I think sometimes Fusion is offline. I cannot do that. Maybe I have a plastic one already downloaded. Uh, textured plastic. Yeah, so there's a random texture here to the plastic. So if we drag that one onto here, uh, and then we'll change the color of this. And you can change the roughness of the surface, the reflectiveness, and everything else. Go to done. Now, if we get closer in, you'll see that this has a, a texture to it. And if we go to render, you can see that texture and how it reacts on the surface. So uh, obviously it takes a little longer to render if you begin to put on more complex um, surfaces. And if you're closer in, it needs to show more detail. So this is almost like a powder coat or a um, rough textured finish. So jump over to appearance again. Um, now you can also add your own bit, um, bump maps. So uh, let's say we go with this uh, ABS white plastic. And we go to edit and to advanced. Uh, you'll see here there's the relief pattern or bump map. Now what that is, is um, a texture to the surface. Um, you can download bump maps. If you go over to um, Google and you search for bump maps, then you'll find them. Um, so this particular one here is, is a solar panel. So you can see it's got these bumps and shapes to it. Um, so what it will basically do is it will take the, uh, the highlights as raised areas and the darker areas as lower areas of relief. And um, you'll see the effect that it has basically on the surface here you start to get that shape almost engraved into the surface. You see here when we go to the render view, it's much more prominent and easy to see. Okay? So you see there the um, the bumps, it takes on the, the the texture of the image that was uploaded. Now you can match that texture together with an actual um, overlaid um, image as well. So if we go to appearance again, and that was our ABS, we go to edit. Again to advanced, now here under color, there's a little drop down arrow. And if we change that to image instead, and we grab that same image, you'll see that image now gets overlaid on the top. So now we have an image and we can match that up with the bump map texture that we put on there, you see. So uh, this is supposed to be a uh, solar panel um, texture, for example, but you can grab all sorts of other um, textures. Let's, let's take a look. Um, let's get a um, steel checker plate bump map. And you go to Google Images and you'll find them here. So um, there's a uh, seamless bump map here. That's on Shutterstock. Um, let's see if we can find a free one that we could use. This one possibly would work. So um, obviously the free ones are usually not going to be quite as nice. Uh, this one looks like it could be okay for us if it's free there we go so we'll grab that and I'll save that image now we come back over to here we go back to our um, appearance 
and we'll do this one to the steel. So we'll edit the steel, advanced, and again over here, we change the image, select that one that we just downloaded, and I think we need to alter the scale. So we can change that down to let's say um, 10, for example. Okay, that's a little small, so if we go to 20, maybe 25 would do it. Okay, so there's 25. So this does not look very realistic right now. It just looks like a, a pattern stuck onto the surface, okay? Um, However, if we use it as a bump map instead, so again, we'll go to our steel, we'll edit this, go to advanced, and our bump map, we select this. Now that looks a lot more realistic. We go over to our render. And there we go. We have like a checker plate steel uh, finish. Looks quite realistic, shiny. So that basically is how we can customize materials here um, in Fusion 360 with bump maps, where that will overlaid um, um, graphics to get to a surface. There's one other thing you can do as well which is adding what are called decals. So if we go to uh, add a decal here, we'll choose to insert from the computer. You can select um, an image. So I'll grab the Fusion 360 uh, logo from here. There we go. I'll select the surface to put it on. And uh, we'll rotate it around 90 degrees. Scale it up a bit. Okay. And there now we have our logo placed onto the surface, like a sticker. So that's why they're called decals because it's like a sticker or applying a decal to a um, to a surface. So that's a little bit different to applying a material. Now this is kind of like if you want to put a logo on a product or something like that, or a name or a label. That's a little different to the, the actual physical material or surface. So I hope that you found this introduction to materials and texturing in Fusion 360 useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of the latest videos from Fusion360Tutorials.com. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.